everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So if you've been following my YouTube channel, you're a subscriber, or if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll know that I've been in Belgrade this weekend. So I was really, really fortunate to be able to come here with a press pass to cover the Serbian national final that took place last night. I will talk about all of those things in a moment. But before I do that, I really, really want to thank the broadcast RTS and the head of PR, who is this amazing lady, Maria Milanovic. Without her, I wouldn't have been able to come. And I wouldn't have had an amazing experience, which was last night. Now, last night, where do I start? Like, I've woken up early because I'm super, super excited about the whole thing. It was the best Eurovision experience of my life. Like, so many past Serbian and Montenegro acts were were there and and the press room and the the green room and the studio they were just all in the same space so you could not kind of interact and see both the performers and also past acts so like yeah so 2017 tiana she was really nice um Kinez, 2015 from montenegro he was really nice he spent time speaking to people sergey montenegro 2014 he was lovely the best person, she was so sweet. So I'm like quite a nervous person. So it was always silly that I was even there yesterday with this, like what am I gonna do? Um, but the nicest person, Yelena Tomasevic. She represented Serbia in 2008. She was so lovely. And I was there, I'm like, it was near the end of the night and I was like, right, I need to get some pictures with people uh, or there's gonna be no evidence that I was here. And I went up to her and I, well actually that's not true, the Balkan guy who's a YouTuber who, um, yeah, I spent a lot of time with this weekend. I said to him, I was like, I haven't really got a photo and I really, really like her and she seems lovely. And he was like, right, come with me. So we went over and he said, blah, 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 English. And she was like, oh, fine. And she was lovely. Um, and also, can I just say, um, there were so many lovely participants last night that really did spend time. Uh, in not all of them, um, but a few of them really spent time with the press. Now you had the Serbian press, which um, I will be honest with you, they were pretty kind of hardcore. And moreover, like I was getting obviously a lot of the questions being translated to me. And a lot of the questions from the Serbian press were just personal questions, like about scandals and love lives and stuff like that. And there were some lovely, lovely YouTubers or people associated with YouTube that were really into Eurovision. I just want to do a shout out to Eurovox and who's that other beautiful channel? Eurosong.hr, they're a Croatian um, YouTube channel and the Balkan guy who's a YouTuber. Like obviously they'd been there the whole week. I only came for the final and obviously they were speaking Serbian the whole time and obviously I rock up and then obviously they all had to speak English. They were so lovely. They like were translating everything for me. They were like pointing out who, I knew who the participants were that I didn't necessarily rec. There was a lot of like other celebrities there as well. Um, I please do support those channels if you do subscribe to my channel, Eurovox, that team were lovely last night. Eurosong.hr, they were lovely. Um, and the Balkan guy, they honestly, I couldn't have done yesterday without them actually. Um, but it was really evident, the artists last night who, not really nice, but obviously I was clocking who was doing interviews with Eurovox and Eurosong.hr. So obviously CNAN from Wee Wee Blogs was there yesterday, so he obviously got to speak to a lot of them kind of without, in outside of the press room. So like the most, ni like I will be honest with you, watching all the interviews, Zoya, sorry, I need to turn that off. Ah. Um, Zoya was literally the nicest person. I can, and I'm not just saying that because I know she's got a pretty hardcore um, fan base but she spent a lot of time with these channels that are a lot smaller, just talking about Eurovision, because that's the point. Whilst obviously the Serbian media are more interested in their private life, you've got kind of, yeah, Eurovox and Eurosong HR that want to ask some questions about their song, their staging in Eurovision. And she spent so much time with them. The band Gift, I, that was noticeable. They spent a lot of time with them. Um, Neva, um, she spent a lot of time with them. Um, the nicest, 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 nicest person who really did try and spend as much time with people was Marilena Mikic. Like, she, there's no, even though you would think she'd be a bit of a diva, she's not at all. She was so lovely. Um, is there anything else I need to ramble about last night other than the fact that I absolutely loved it? Right, let's talk about last night. So, um, sorry, let me have a little sip. 
Okay. First and foremost, like, before the show, what were people saying? Like, I was obviously in and around Belgrade yesterday, and like, intermittently, I would speak to people. Um, I didn't realise that the videos that I'd posted on my channel um, had been watched by a few people. <laughs> um, and as a result of that, I did actually speak to quite a few people this weekend, and a lot of people did ask me, so what do you think? And I would have conversations with people. Man, there was this feeling yesterday about Constructor. There was no longer any talk about Angelina. Um, there was limited talk about Zoya. Um, it was Sario versus Constructor. And I mean, we saw that play out last night, didn't we? Before the show, I genuinely thought Sario had it. Um, based on a lot of factors, but based on one of the key ones, and that is I was being told that in the press room in semi-final two, it, they went crazy after her performance. And then when I reacted to the song, which by the way, is still on my channel, and I've had quite a few people comment on it saying, you talk too much. The reason why I talk too much is because YouTube blocked the original version and I had to basically cut out anything that was copyrighted, which happened to be the reaction. So there is a video on my, my YouTube channel with me talking, and yes, I am talking too much, but if you don't subscribe to my channel, I thought I was quite brief. So <laughs> you're welcome, um, because this is gonna be very talky, so I would say tune out now. Um, but basically I was being told like there was a huge standing ovation in the press room. But on, but then last night people were talking about it. Was it because semi-final two was so weak? Uh, it was a weak semi-final. By the time that song came on, I think people were so excited. Um, I did one or two interviews, one or two interviews, like with <laughs> Eurosong.hr and YouTube related people. And I kind of said, I wanted Constructor to win, but I felt Sara Yo probably had it. Um, and yeah, so I think that was my official line yesterday. I want Constructor to win, but I think Sara Yo's got it. And I think I probably even said the words, which song is best for Eurovision? And I think I said, I think Sara Yo, with every song that's been selected and with the staging, it's probably one of the best stagings of all national finals, actually, Sara Yo's. Um, I think that there's something there that could, could work quite well at Eurovision. And then obviously we're watching the show and true to form, so Zoya was the first huge round of applause. That sounded so much better yesterday and I don't know whether it was because I was in the press room and it was such a loud speaker, but then other people confirmed no because they were there in semi-final one and that didn't make a difference. It was better yesterday. She literally delivered, she came, she conquered. She came third, right? The top three were the, the top three, weren't they, in the end? Constructor, Sario, um, and then Zoya, and I think what well, Angelina and that guy with the piano, I'm not gonna say anything about him on my channel. <laughs> There's, if you are in Serbia, then you'll know that, that with that name comes a lot of controversy, particularly in and around Eurovision. So yesterday I did a lot of research on that guy. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so yeah, and then Sara Yo came on and I literally, the place went crazy. <laughs> starting to be a few ripple effects after that where people were waiting for Constructor and like I started to speak to people oh, people were so nice yesterday like everyone really made an effort to speak English I did feel bad I think I was the only non-Serb there yesterday oh no obviously there were Croats and stuff like that but uh, yeah uh, anyway um, people were waiting for Constructor and the difference between Sara Yo and Constructor in the press room when Constructor came on, the press room was singing along to Constructor. Um, and I don't want to name too many names, but it would seem that teams associated with Sara Yo, not supporting Constructor, but even they could, in the press room, were getting behind, not getting behind, but they were clapping and singing along to Constructor as well, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, and, and obviously when that song finished, huge, 
huge round of applause. <laughs> Not the tide switch, because it genuinely was, I felt sorry, yo, and constructor in that press room by that point. And I was actually, I know obviously certain people have to be impartial, I can't name names, but like informally afterwards I was like, so what do you think? And like, people like constructor, like the tide had turned, it seemed in the press room that the wind was behind this song. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it won the jury and it won the televote. Um, and it was so amazing because um, <laughs> when she won, I was just sitting there because obviously I don't understand Serbian. I'm in this press room watching this screen. I don't know what's going on. And then um, <laughs> I went to record the win. Um, press record as she won and then did a scan of the room <laughs> and it was pretty much empty because everyone ran to the stage to obviously because that's when the press can go in so the press can go in to see her collect her her trophy um, and so I just turned around and there was this really really nice guy um, with Sinan from Weeby Blogs um, who Sinan took with him <laughs> um, and he was like yeah, everyone's going to the studio. Do you want to go? I can get you in. Because um, I didn't have a camera. They apparently were quite strict. They wouldn't let you in. I only had a phone. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah. But they, they were lovely. And they let me in anyway. Um, there is no audience. I don't know if people know this. P probably people in Serbia. Like, the stadium... The sta every everyone in Serbia seems to think that, that that stage was the best stage that they've had for ages. It was an amazing stage. The reason why it's an amazing stage is because it's in a studio and they've taken the whole space for the stage. There is no audience. Um, and what's even more interesting, because of that factor, when I obviously watched the winning performance, you couldn't really hear what she was singing because she's singing to a microphone, but she's not singing to a studio, so we don't need to hear her. Um, but it's fine because the energy of the press and the energy of the um, the broadcasting team. And they did a really beautiful photo at the end. Obviously, this has been so intense for them the last couple of days, and it was a huge. I think it was a huge success for them and for Serbia. Um, and then, yeah. It, the whole night was just amazing. Now, that's my initial blurb, and hopefully people have just gone through that, because that would have added no value to your life. Um, the second thing that I want to talk about. So yesterday, I had a few people from the UK message me on Instagram <laughs> about uh, Constructors Win. So, okay, I'll call it. There seems to be a lot of people um, that aren't happy. There's a couple of factors here that we need to take into account. Number one, um, because of 36 songs, what has happened is people have reduced the amount of songs they've engaged with, genuinely, particularly out of Serbia. So on initial release, I think everyone listened to Zoya, uh, Sara Yo, and Angelina. Those were the three that were pretty much being pumped out there, uh, my channel included. I reacted to those three first. Um, and as a result of that, I think people kind of got tribal and behind one of those songs from the beginning um, and didn't really listen to any of the other songs. That's the first thing. The second thing, the Euro bubble. We've also got to remember Eurovision fans are in a bubble and tend to kind of be in sync with each other with musical tastes. And it would seem that Eurovision fans were behind Sari Yo predominantly and semi-Zoya. Um, so those two factors in itself would have meant that people, after the result, would have been confused and, and disappointed. I think the one that I just want to kind of point out at this stage, okay, so, hello stranger, someone I haven't spoken to for a while. So, can you help me to understand why Constructor is washing her hands in the performance? Right, so, let's do that. Serbians, you can move on to the next chapter. Um, okay, 
The reason why she's washing her hands is because, and I didn't know this until I reacted to semi-final one, and I said, I don't know why she's washing her hands. Um, and bearing in mind, my, my channel is a testament of the fact that I've liked Constructor from the beginning, so this is not a surprise to me. Um, when I ranked them, I think I ranked her sixth, she was fifth, and then I switched her with Angelina, and then in, after the semi-finals, I was obsessed with this song. Um, okay, the song is about Basically, she is an independent artist, which means that she has to pay for medical care. And she's not entitled to free medical care or insured medical care. And the washing the hands is basically her making a point that she has to make sure that how she lives her life allows her to be as healthy as possible, because if she's ill, she's in trouble, because she's not or she doesn't have access to free healthcare. So when she washes her hands and she dries them, she washes them again, it's highlighting the fact that she needs to be extra precautious because she doesn't have free medical care. Now, this is a piece of art. I don't think there's any doubt in that. And moreover, this song got released with two other songs, and I think there is kind of an arc, a story arc, or kind of, it's, it's art, basically. Um, so that's the meaning of the song. Next chapter. Right, this song and how I feel this song is going to do at Eurovision. Inside Serbia, I think particularly in that press room, in that studio, people were super excited. I know that Serbians as well are disappointed, some, um, because there is a lot of support for this in Serbia, but I know a lot of people outside of Serbia are disappointed. Uh, so let's take away the fact that Sara Yeo didn't win, because what tends to happen when one of those fan favourites don't win, it dies down, and we then start getting used to the one that was selected. So let's think about this song at Eurovision. This song won't change. Like, she's not going to... I hope she doesn't change it into English. That would be an awful, awful decision. Um, and moreover, it's not going to get revamped. Um, I don't think the kind of there's anything else they need to do with this song. And we've got to remember, it's art. And as a result of that, she's probably going to be very reluctant to change anything with this song. Um, I actually quite like the whole concept of the staging, with her there, with that serious face. I mean, the watering. And I've seen so many memes outside of Serbia, like, making or taking the kind of fun out of it don't do that because I've told you the message so when you know the message then you can't really make fun of it um, and I quite like the backing down I like the whole concept now I can't steal this idea but we were talking about this yesterday in the press room when she won what does this now mean was that the right one for Serbia because I think a lot of people's anxieties come down to the fact of how the hell is the whole of people outside of Serbia going to know what the hell is going on on that stage? How are you going to stop people taking to Twitter and basically doing memes about this lady washing her hands? It's a tricky one, but obviously Serbia's got time to kind of sort that out. But ultimately, I think the best suggestion was made yesterday. I think it came from the Balkan guy, and that was the fact, and we've seen this before, whereby potentially in the background translated lyrics at key moments can be done. And I've seen this done before and I can't think of what songs have done it. But ultimately, to get around it, people have flashed lyrics at certain points in English in the background. That could do it. I think that could do it. Um, because without that, yeah. Yeah, let's call it. Without that, there are a lot of people, obviously, you can go to Twitter yourself, basically confused outside of Serbia. Taking that away, I think the song itself, I think it's really catchy. I think it stays with you. I was in the taxi on the way back from the press centre yesterday and all I was, all I had in my, so in my head was that melody. And I think with three minutes, with 26 songs, I think to have an infectious melody is key and important. And I do think jury's gonna, I think they're gonna understand this is art. I do think that and I think, Arty songs do get some love from juries, but it's gonna, how are you gonna tap into that televote? That's gonna be Serbia's kind of key question to deal with by the end, by the time we get to May. Because yeah, let's call it. You're gonna have to try and kind of 
get the rest of Europe to understand what's happening here. Serbia get it. And I think today people are going to be pretty, pretty excited. Well, they were excited last night. What does that even mean, Jade? Um, basically, I can confirm to you that the majority of Serbians I've spoken to are very happy with this result. So it's not a fix or anything like that. Like, it is genuine. Um, okay. So that's as much as I need to talk about, because apparently I talk too much. Um, so let's watch this song one more time um, and hope it doesn't get blocked. I do really think that this will get appreciated by the juries. I think they're going to get its art. It's so weird seeing this again after knowing what the stage looks like. I'll admit one thing I need to say, which I was meaning to say prior to this. Um, it was so interesting yesterday, uh, being around press. Um, a lot of people actually don't have interviews with her. <laughs> um, because a lot of people didn't think she was going to win. Um, I didn't see her yesterday. I didn't, she didn't come anywhere near the press room. There's a few of them that didn't. Sorry, Yo didn't come anywhere near the press room. Um, nor did uh, Constructor. Um, but there was a few people when she won, uh, yeah, who um, basically thought, oh no, I have no interview with this lady because I didn't think she was going to win. Um, anyway, they have interviews now. Um, look, semi-finals, the importance of semi-finals. It was interesting speaking to um, Eurovision, hey, I'm so sorry my phone keeps going, but I don't know how to turn it off. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Right, so, right, how do I turn this off? Sorry, it's my new phone, but I haven't tra taken the SIM out of it. And it's an iPhone, and I've never had one before. No, I thought. <laughs> um, okay, um, speaking to Eurosong HR, so they had obviously 14 songs in the final, no semi finals. They made a really good point semi finals. Semi finals allows momentum to happen behind a song. I think if Constructor. The first time we heard this was in the final, and Serbia didn't have 36 songs, which I don't think they should ever do again. I think that needs to change. There were far too many songs. If this song was on the night, I think it wouldn't have won. But the fact of semi-final won, people were like, oh, what is this song? And it allowed two days to grow. Like, this was trending on Twitter Friday and Saturday. Um, Importance of semi-finals, it allows a song to build momentum. And I think there's something to be said for that. Again, you can say, well, at Eurovision it has to be instantaneous, but Eurovision has semi-finals. Eurovision has semi-finals, which allows songs to gain a momentum. So I think countries that don't have semi-finals um, might want to think about it, because I think that's the reason why this one, over Sorry Yo. Like literally in the press room, as soon as this first chorus kicked in, everyone was singing. And I didn't understand this reference. There was a few people that I can't name because they have to be impartial. When I when we were talking about who should win and they were like doing this, and I was like, is that a Serbian gesture? But I can't tell you. <laughs> oh okay, don't tell me, okay. <laughs> but obviously it's a reference to this song. Uh, can I just say, yesterday, what we were saying is, well done, Serbia. This isn't a sound that they would normally send. Like, this is a gamble. And like we were saying, we were really proud of Serbia yesterday for actually selecting this. I really want this to do well. And I tell you why I want it to do well, because it's going to make Serbia think in the future they can start taking more risks. I thought Sorry Yo was a risk for Serbia. It's not traditional pop, that song. See, when this beat kicks in, you tell me it's not infectious. Pardon the pun, because this song's about health. So she has to wash them again, because she has no health insurance. I want to make that clear. <laughs> I mean, the medical signs should have given it away slightly. Um, okay, right. I have nothing else to add because I've talked too much. <laughs> um, so those are my thoughts. Um, I think Serbia so. have, have made a great choice here. I think this. I think this is a great choice. 
Um, I just think Serbia need to go away and think, right, we need to we need to make the message of this song clear with the staging. And that is out of my expertise or remit. Someone needs to get paid some money to do that. So yeah, those are my thoughts. So lastly, thank you very much, Serbia. Like last night in that studio was amazing. And just being, being in Belgrade this weekend, if you've never been to Serbia, I had no expectations because this was all a last minute decision. I'd never been before. Uh, Belgrade is a great city. Come in the summer. It's got some fantastic bars all along the river. It's actually snowing now though, which is crazy because it's March, but it's actually snowing outside. Uh, but yeah, give Serbia a go. So those are my thoughts. Please let me know what you think. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Please do click the notification button so you're informed even when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.